Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about um, health and fitness, rider health and fitness, and in particular, rider weight and how that affects the horse, how that affects the horse's welfare. So um, a huge welcome. Somebody's raising their hand. Alison, are you raising your hand? I'm just going to let you talk there if you want to, if you have a question to start off with. Just wanted to say hello. Oh, hello. How nice of you. Thank you. Fine, Good. All right. Um, all right. So the importance of how sort of fit and healthy you are, it is so important to the horse. And I think we often neglect it. And I just want to talk about why it's important. Now, as a trainer, one of the things that I've found is that um, a badly fitting saddle or a horse that's been having to work with a rider that's too heavy for it is the biggest cause of behavioral problems that I've seen. So what happens when a horse starts to react to that, so starts to bark or something and actually gets rid of the rider, that they learn that really quickly because it's simply a release of pressure. So if you're you know, trotting along and you're actually hurting the horse and the horse barks and you fall off, the horse instantly has a release of pressure and so that becomes um, something that the horse is going to want to repeat. It's going to want to do that again because it, it's a really good way of releasing the pressure. So it's something that be, then also becomes quite hard to untrain. But it can be done. It can be done. So, you know, if you're already in that situation, don't worry. We can certainly work through that. But it's best to try not to get there. You know, I, I find it um, really important with young horses to not ever come off them. I think that's a really important thing. But anyway, for a lot of people, you know, you buy a horse, you don't know what its history is, it may well have that in its history. So it's something we can certainly deal with. But once you realize that you perhaps need to be healthier or fitter for your horse, then, you know, there's a lot of things that you can actually do about that. Now, research has shown that you want to be a, no more than 20% of your horse's weight. So that you need to take yourself and your saddle, just the American saddles, of course, are a lot heavier than the English saddles. Um, but you and your saddle take that weight combined, and that should be no more than 20% of your horse's weight. And it's actually quite a lot, you know, you'd be surprised. So it's important that you actually know what your horse weighs, of course. Um, so get a, a weight tape is a good way of doing it um, and work out what your horse weighs and then work out, you know, what you weigh. Of course, you know, most of us, especially women, you know, if you wear jumpers, you, you know, they don't look good on anybody. Do they look good on anybody? I never think they do. But most of us, you know, could happily lose a few pounds and tone up a little bit. And I do think that is really important. The other thing for the horse is not only saddle fits, you could have the most beautifully fitting saddle for your horse, but then if you sit on that saddle and you're overweight, it's going to completely change the fit on the horse. So, you know, at times also the, the saddle could be actually sitting on the horse's back. If you come down and compress that, it could be sitting on the horse's back, which is going to really cause you some problems and the horse. Also, the horse's joints. You know, we don't think about this very much, but especially the young horses, we often work our young horses quite hard. So you're going to be putting all that extra pressure on the horse's joints as well. So it's all really, really worth taking into consideration, thinking quite carefully about it. I know if you look at Facebook and you see photos of people, I've, I've looked around quite a bit at this and you see photos of people that are really clearly too heavy for their horse and they'll say something like do you think this is okay do you think I'm too heavy for this horse and always the comments are oh no you look great on that horse you know you look fantastic oh no it's great it's fine you know it's a strong horse and it's so clear that that is not the case I'm really not sure why people do that because it's really unfair on the rider and it's also really unfair on the horse and it's likely that situation is likely to deteriorate and over time that person might well get hurt and that horse's welfare is going to be compromised because what happens is that 
it starts, the horse starts, you know, bucks the person off. And then before you know it, the horse ends up at the sales or, you know, going to a trainer that blames the horse, you know, says that the horse is bad, the horse is badly behaved. And all of this sort of thing leads down the road to punishment and the horse ends up being punished for protecting itself. So, you know, it is a, it's a nasty road to travel. So I think it's something we need to be really aware of and take action. So how do you take action? Well, I think that's a big problem too. I, I don't think there's really any sort of people overweight that like to be overweight. I don't think, you know, if you get on your horse and think, oh, you know, maybe I'm too heavy for this horse, that you're happy with that situation. And if there was an easy solution, we would all take it. You know, if there was a pill to take, we would all take it. I was talking to somebody in a meeting this morning, actually, and she said that my horse shies at everything. I was just walking the horse from point A to point B, which is 20 meters, and, you know, it shied at five things and jumped all over the place so she's got it this magnesium supplement <laughs> and I'm like well that's good but it's not going to change your horse's behavior you know it, it simply isn't you know it's it's a nice thought but it's it's not going to change your horse's behavior um it it might help it might help the horse calm down it might fix an imbalance in the horse but it won't stop your horse shying what will putting your horse in the engagement zone putting your horse in that bubble of communication, actually doing the work. And it's the same thing with weight loss, but it's harder with weight loss somehow because, you know, we have to keep sort of, we have to keep at it, you know, and, and you don't often see results for a little while as well. So it, it really is a matter of taking a lot of different things and bringing them together and making our own sort of bubble, our health and fitness bubble. So one of the things about, you know, one of the aspects here to look at is diet. And even the word itself, you know, diet, diet implies that you, you do something for a short period of time, doesn't it? I'm on a diet. I'm on a diet. So I'll be on a diet for a week or a month or six months I'm on a diet. And I think, that's, I think that's wrong. We need to look at diet as in what we eat. Changing your diet should be a lifestyle change, not a temporary change. We need to make permanent changes because otherwise we're gonna lose weight and we're gonna find it again. It's easier to find than it is to lose, right? So unless we make permanent changes, then there's absolutely no point in making short-term changes. So we wanna think about that and think about permanent changes. So how do we start to make permanent changes? And I think, the first way is to, the first thing is to find out what you're doing now. So what's the situation now? And that's why with the Eat Ride Love course, um, we start with tracking. Now, let's find out what we're doing now. So we just start tracking what we're doing. So writing down what you're eating. And then we work out, okay, what the macro breakdown is. So the macronutrients, so, you know, what the sort of the carbs, the protein and the fat breakdown. And we look at when we eat. So that's another really important factor. We look at all these things and we see how we feel and then we start to make changes to that. So it's, it is a journey, you know, that's an overused word, but it, losing the weight is a journey and there's a lot of things to think about when we're planning how we're going to go about this journey. And it's a bit like jumping in the car and go on holiday. Oh, we've got a week's holiday, we're going to get in the car and we're going to go. You never do that, right? You always know where you're going and when you're going to get there, you know where you're going to stay when you're there. And we need to do the same thing with this journey. We need to have it really well planned. So the first thing is to start tracking and to get used to using all these tools that can help us because isn't it fabulous? You know, today we've got so many like, smartphone apps and things that can really help us do this. It's not like, you know, 10 years ago even where everything was up to us. You know, now we can, we can use an app. Like I've got this great app that um, measures weight. What's it called? Happy Scale. I love it. It's great. It's really encouraging. You put your weight in every day or every week and it tells you, whoa, you know, you've made progress and it gives you all sorts of predictions. And it's a great little app, you know, 
it's very um, motivating. And the other one that's really good is an app called Zero, and that's a intermittent fasting app, which we'll talk about in a minute. But that that's great. You know, you press, oh, I'm going to start my intermittent fasting, and then it tells you when you've reached your 18 hours or whatever, whatever it was you wanted to do. So the first thing is to start tracking. Really, we need to know where we're starting. So. I encourage people to start to track what they're eating now. So with the Eat Right Love course, that's what we do. You know, the first sort of week, we just start to track what we're doing now. What's, what's it like this week? And it gives people a really good insight. It also makes you start to be really honest with yourself because I encourage you to write things down before you eat them. So you know, that, that also makes you think twice, you know, there's a bit of cake at the shop, right? Okay, I've got to write this in my diary before I eat it. Do I really want to eat it? Do I really want to write in my diary that I ate that piece of cake? And, you know, the answer is probably not. So that's a, that's a really good idea. But do track, do work out what it is and where you are now. What are you eating now? Where are you now? What is that macro breakdown? And importantly, how do you feel? As we were talking, we had an Eat Right Love meeting this morning and I was talking to somebody who'd fallen off the wagon with, the, with their diet over the weekend. And the big thing there was she said she was so uncomfortable so because she ate a whole lot of carbs that she didn't normally eat. She said she was bloated and just feeling really uncomfortable and that was very unpleasant. And so that's actually really worth knowing how these foods make you feel. So very important to track your macros so once we start doing that once we start tracking what we're eating we then introduce that and we start to count what the macronutrient breakdown is so that, and that together with how this makes us feel is very informative and that's where we know this is where we're starting now we can start making changes and see how that affects how we feel about that the other thing that comes into play is the eating windows. And, you know, I remember when the first Eat Ride Love course started and a couple of people said to me, oh, well, I can't, I can't do this. I can't change my eating windows because my doctor or my somebody has said to me, I've got to eat at least six times a day because that's what keeps my metabolism going and that, you know, that keeps me um, burning fat apparently. But the problem is it's just the opposite is true. You know, and every time you eat, you spike your insulin level. And every time your insulin level goes up, your body is storing fat because that's what insulin does. It tells your body to store fat. So eating six times a day, you're going to store more of those calories as fat than you would if you only eat once a day, for example. And it is, this is, a, this is another thing that is, is difficult to do because it's a real change for a lot of people. So I don't suggest you go to, you know, a four hour eating window overnight, but I do suggest that you start to track when you're eating. So we're already tracking what you're eating, now start to track when you're eating it. And it is really interesting because if you're also tracking how you're feeling, then it's, it, gives you a lot of information because what happens when you do eat six times a day, especially if you're eating, you know, healthy fruits and vegetables, then your insulin level is probably really spiking a lot. So what happens is you feel pretty good. You know, you have, um, have some fruit and you feel pretty good for half an hour and then you go down again because your insulin is going up and down and so is your energy level. So an hour after that apple or whatever you had, you're hungry again. And you think, oh, well, I just had an apple, so that's not much. But, um, and so you go back and you, you get something else. So what happens is you, you, you're doing this yo-yo the whole time with your energy levels. Whereas if you actually look at your macros and you increase the um, amount of fat that you're eating and the amount of protein, then that keeps you satisfied for longer and it gives you more sustained energy levels as well. Take some adapting too, but once you do adapt to that, you'll find that you have a lot more energy and it's much more stable throughout the day, which is really good. Now we get to the exercise um, component and a lot of people think, you know, as soon as you sort of start saying, oh, we're 
doing a health and fitness. They've got oh, go all the exercise back. But the thing is that you can't out exercise a bad diet. You really can't. You you need you need to get the diet bit right. The diet bit is 80% of it. So if you're wanting to lose weight and get fitter, 80% of that is going to be the diet. So I encourage you to get the diet bit right and really focus on that and then introduce the exercise slowly. Because if you've got quite a bit of weight to lose, especially, you're going to want to start shedding that before you really get too into the exercise. Um, but you can build up slowly and, and that's good. And that's why with the Eat Ride Love course, I incorporate the horse training. Yeah? Because the good thing about the horse training is that we start that, most of that on the ground. And so the first thing you see, once you start um, changing your diet and changing your eating windows and your macronutrients around a bit, and then you start training your horse, what you're doing is you're starting with the give to the bit and the shoulder control and the long reining, and you actually start really increasing your steps. So if you have a pedometer like a Fitbit or just something you have in your pocket, you know, pretty quickly, you're up to that 10,000 steps a day. And um, if you're anything like Susan, I can see is watching here in the snow, you're gonna be donning your snowshoes and making a track around the house before you know where you are. And it's amazing how the changes that that makes. I also give you in the course a, um, an exercise program. So we have morning sort of stretches, which is just some, easy sort of exercises to ease you into the into the morning into the day and then we have three workouts a week so the thing about those workouts is that their core strength we really focus on the core so there's an arms day and a legs day and a core day we're basically building the muscles you need for riding but they're very they're very general so you at the end of this um, at the course, you'll be just much fitter than you were when you began. But I think the thing, the thing to do is really keep that as secondary because what happens with people when they do decide to make big changes in their lives, they go in and get, you know, you say to yourself on well, Monday morning, I'm going to get fit and healthy and, you know, this is, this is the way I'm going to do it. If you take on too much, it, it's too much. You know, you do, you fall off the wagon and then you just give up and say, oh, it, it's too difficult, it's too difficult. Whereas if you make step-by-step -step changes, you add a little thing each week, just like the horse training. You know, we, we get a good foundation and we add to that. So we teach give to the bit, then we add shoulder control, and then we add long reining, and then we do all of this on board. And we keep adding to the horse's training, but we start with that solid foundation. We start with the thing that we need to add to. So with the health and fitness, it's a matter of starting with knowing where you are. So starting with tracking. So you're tracking your macros, you're tracking your exercise. It's really, really important. So then we are gonna add a couple of other things. The big thing that we're adding is the emotional health component. And the Eat Right Love course is aimed at women, women over sort of 45. Um, and one of the things about this group of women in particular is that we always have put ourselves last. I mean, it's absolutely the case. You know, we, we spend our lives looking after everybody else and we find it very hard to put ourselves first. And now is the time to do that. So that's what we do with the Eat Love course. And it's got this whole emotional health component to it, where we look at mindfulness and meditation and journaling. And, you know, it is it's terribly important that we actually say, hang on a minute, now it's my time. And this is something that a lot of the people on the course say it was amazing to actually give myself permission to do that, to feel that, and to take that time for myself. And I think it's very important, actually, for our horses that we do that. And I don't know about you, but I've, um, I've had a couple of times in my life where I haven't ridden. I've made the decision not to ride because I didn't feel I was emotionally in a place that was good for my horse. 
And I think that the better we are emotionally, the better our interaction is going to be with our horse. And again, I think that reflects back onto the horse's welfare all the time. I really believe that, that the horse, the better you feel about yourself, the better your interaction is going to be with your horse on every level. So it is hugely important. We, we get into meditation and mindfulness and journaling and all of those things that are so important with your horse. Because, you know, with the training, the first thing we want with the horse is relaxation. Now, if we go into the bubble like this, thinking about something else, um, we can't possibly expect the horse to relax. You know, it's just, it's never going to happen. So we need to go in being in a place of peace ourselves. And quite often, you know, our lives are busy. I know that, you know, whatever age you are, you know, life does get very busy and things interfere and, you know, things happen, you get very stressed. Being able to deal with that stress and being able to then turn that off and say, right, okay, now I'm going to go and deal with my horse. Now I'm going to go and teach my horse X, Y, and Z. You know, the nice thing about the training is that you have a plan for the horse. So you can switch off from what's happening at work or at home and go out to your horse and say, right, oh, today we're doing hindquarter control. And you can then start working on that sort of bubble of communication. And then when you go back and you can deal with the stressful situation later, sometimes you don't feel you can do that. And I always think you're better off actually just not approaching the horse then. You know, give the horse a day off and deal with the other thing that you have to deal with. Um, another thing that's really important for me is organisation. And... One thing that I've done with the course is to give you a roadmap so that you know where you're going. Because there's a lot of information in the Ride Love course, but it's very important that you know what comes next. You know, what I can, you know, this week I see, you know, I'm tracking my macros and stuff, or I'm just started on this exercise thing, but what comes next? You know, I'm a bit worried about that. So just setting it out so that you know exactly what's coming next. That's in the same way as the, um, as the horse training is, you know, each thing builds on the one before. And it's very important to know, it's like having a map for your journey. It's that you get in a car, you've got the whole week for your holiday, you have a map, you know, you know exactly what road you're taking. You know what the destination is. And here the destination might be a certain weight, it might be a certain body fat percentage, it might be a certain fitness level, might be getting into those white jodhpurs. Who invented white jodhpurs? I mean, ridiculous thing. Anyway, it might be getting into your white jodhpurs. But you know, you know what the destination is. And it's the, the same thing with your horse training. And it's the same thing with the Eat, Ride, Love diet and exercise program as well. Having that roadmap is very important. The final component is support. And I think one of the best things about this course is the support network. So we have two Zoom meetings a week where we come into this platform, but we have everybody here on video and audio and we all chat with one another and we say, you know, our wins and what we're having trouble with and what we need some help with. And we've also got the Facebook group, which is great as well. And it's a really nice group of people, actually. What I've found in some of those sort of support groups is that, you know, people put up really jokey, silly things about, you know, I don't know how they'd rather be at McDonald's or something. And it, it's not very inspiring for others. Whereas our group is really good and very supportive, very encouraging, uh, which is lovely. And I think because we've stuck to the, um, the older women uh, as well, like we don't have any of those sort of, you know, 18 year olds who actually just want to put up photographs of how good they look in their bikinis because it's really, yeah, we've all been there. We've, we're now over 45. I'm good 10 years over 45. Um, so 
you know, we we need that. We don't need that. We really don't need that. We we need people that are like minded and people that are going to have the same problems and issues that we're having because then we can discuss them openly and feel supported and safe, which is what the Can Do Equine and the e Ride Love environment is all about. So if you're um, watching this live, great. Um, do come along and if you go to the website, you'll find a place where you can join. If you're watching a replay, um, the course may or may not be open. It's not open for long and it only opens um, a couple of times a year. So you can contact me and I can tell you whether it's open or not. Otherwise, I hope to see you inside the training. And I'm going to stop this recording now and turn on the questions.